Here's three iron rules for Google Workspace admins, whether you're new to the game or you've been around for a long time. G'day there, I'm Pete Moriarty. If you're new to the channel, we help businesses systemize, organize, and scale using Google Workspace. And we're here to help IT managers, IT leaders, business owners wearing the IT person hat, if that's you, that's fine. Or even entrepreneurs running smaller businesses who are doing everything in the Google Workspace world. Now here's some tips for administrators. I'm gonna share with you some of my top tips for making sure that you get the absolute basics right inside your Workspace account. And stick around to the end, I've got a good one on making sure that you can save some money in your Workspace account account right now. I promise you, I promise you I'm going to help you with that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. I'm 99% sure I'm going to save you some money. So let's get started with a sharing tip. Every time you share something inside Google Workspace, if you're a small business and you're one, two, three, four, five people, you're probably just sharing things on an individual basis. Bob's joined the business, let's share the folder with Bob. Mary's joined the business, let's share that calendar invite for the weekly recurring meeting with Mary. And we run a remote team, we've scaled up our business, we've got over 50 employees and so across our group, we've had to start to think how larger companies think with their IT management. And so having been working with businesses for over, I'd say about 15 years now, we've helped many businesses to scale up and create organizational efficiency and organizational structure in how they scale with their IT systems. And so if you're a small business owner, or if you're managing a medium-sized business, well, you need to start thinking about what is the scaling structure of my IT. Now that sounds a bit airy-fairy and a bit ambiguous, but let me get you right down to the basics. Rather than sharing individually, we need to switch to group-based sharing. Group-based sharing is gonna allow us to scale up the different teams in our business and keep the security nice and tight. Now, not only is this gonna be convenient for you, but it's also gonna make sure that you don't accidentally have the wrong sets of eyes seeing the wrong information inside the business. For example, you probably don't wanna have all of the board raw reports and you know strategic plans and anything confidential like you know legal issues in the you know executive area of the business shared with others outside that area of the business. You probably don't want everybody to see the dirty laundry of the business and you know who sued you or who you've sued or what employment contracts you have with each, with each individual person in the business. Likewise, if you've got your payroll data or your financial data in the finance or accounts area of the business, that's probably not something that you want to share with the whole team either. Now, rather than creating shares on an individual basis, we're gonna set up groups inside our Google Workspace admin panel. And when you create a security group inside your Google Workspace admin, that allows you to add the correct staff into that group and then share resources with the group rather than sharing it with individual staff. And so this works for calendar events and especially is great for recurring calendar events. It works for Google shared drives. It works if you've got individual files that you need to share with a group. And it also works for those who are using Google chat spaces and you wanna give someone an invitation to a space. Now imagine this, someone joined your company, you've onboarded them for their first day of work, you've given them their email address and you've given them their password. And what do you normally do? Well, you go and add them to the Google Drive and then you go and add them to the recurring calendar event for the weekly team meeting. And then you go and add them to the right chat room so they get access to that. And you're having to do each one of these things manually. But if you have groups configured, you can place that person in the correct group, whether they're the sales team or the finance team or you know leadership or executive team or any combination of those groups. And all of a sudden that person is automatically going to get access to the correct shared drives inside their Google Drive. They're gonna get access to the correct chat rooms. And so if they wanna open up a Google chat space, they can access the Google chat spaces. But, and this is my favorite one, they're gonna get invitations for all of the recurring meetings that have been set up in Google Calendar for that particular group. And so if you have any recurring meetings, that person is gonna immediately get invitations in their inbox to all of the recurring meetings that that group of staff have been invited to. Let's talk about calendar in iron rule number two. Team calendars, team meetings. We wanna make sure that we configure our calendar correctly so that that works right across the business rather than on an individual basis. Now, Google Calendar works wonderfully and Google Calendar is absolutely great on an individual basis. Sharing your calendar as an individual, that works fantastic. But when you have teams, it makes sense to start putting some of your events onto a team calendar. For example, if you have things like a schedule of a weekly broadcast that the marketing team need to send out, or maybe the finance always do payroll on the second Friday of the month. Well, you wanna make sure that they all set up as recurring meetings on a group-based calendar, because what that means is anyone can leave or join the business and those events don't disappear. 
What tends to happen is when you have teams set up and you have someone creating recurring meetings for that team, if that person is maybe a manager of that team, they're probably gonna set it up from their individual account. But the problem is when you offboard that staff member when that role is replaced, all of those meetings basically disappear and you end up with ghost meetings where nobody is the owner of the meeting anymore and you know the meeting either disappears or it you know hasn't quite been assigned over to the next person correctly and so it's best practice to create team meetings in a team calendar the other great thing about a team calendar is it allows multiple people to collaborate on it. And so you may want to share that team calendar with everyone in the business. And so everyone in the company has the opportunity to see what your team are up to, but it also allows you to do things like maybe sharing free and busy information with a contractor. So a contractor can see when your team meetings are happening. You may also choose to publish a shared calendar or a team calendar publicly. So if you have a schedule of events or you want to create a calendar where others can subscribe to it publicly, that's a great use for using a shared calendar. Remember that all of these tasks make it easy for someone who has just joined your company to get started and be productive as quickly as possible. And that's definitely what you want from your staff when you're employing new people. Iron rule number three is to archive accounts. Any dormant accounts that may be lurking around in your workspace account, and usually people have a couple there, they need to be removed and actually archived. Now, I'm gonna share with you a little trick that we do inside our business, and that is that we create one special account called the archive. And the IT Genius archive is where we put all of the past data from every employee who has left the business. Now, Google Workspace do have some official options for managing archived accounts. There's actually a license that you can buy for a dormant archived account and you pay a little bit for that license and what that does is it allows you to keep an account dormant in storage but I like to be a little bit smarter than that and what we do is we actually migrate all of the data from our past employees into one archive account and then we use the mailbox delegation feature to actually delegate access to that mailbox back to the people who may need to potentially get access to those emails. Typically that's gonna be executives or HR or other leaders or managers in the business. Now the archive is the one place where all of our past employees go. And what that does is it solves the problem of holding onto dormant accounts and paying for their licenses when you don't wanna lose the data of an employee who has left the business. Now, how do you actually make all of this work? Well, step one is you need to create the archive account. Step two is anytime you have an employee that's left the business, you're first gonna suspend their account on the day that they finish up. You're then going to migrate their data. And after you finish migrating their data, you're going to then delete their account and then all their data will be accessible by that account. But you may be asking, well, Pete, how do I migrate their data? Well, for calendar, for drive, and for anything else that's in their account apart from email, you can click one button when you're deleting their account and transfer the ownership of all of that data over into the account. But it doesn't quite grab everything from their workspace account. It won't move the email and you need to use migration tools for that. If you'd like some help with migration tools, that's the kind of thing that our team cover in our concierge service and our team will just take care of it for you so you don't have to bother with those. Alternatively, you can use the Google Migrator tool. We have had challenges with that from time to time, so we don't recommend it. Our team use third-party tools to get the migrations done in the background. And if you'd like to learn more, just reach out to our team for some assistance with that. So there's my three iron rules. I hope I've saved you some money. I hope I've helped you clean things up a little bit. If you're a new administrator, make sure you check out our administrator guides and our administrator playlists on our channel. There's plenty of information there to help you get the most out of Google Workspace. If you are an entrepreneur or a business owner or a business leader, and you'd like to get more out of the platform, well, we've got links below to let you know how to get in touch. If you'd like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.